Hello readers, welcome back. I'm Charlie, I'm the book review guy, and I have been in the restaurant and food service industry for a little bit over 26 years now. Have you ever been in a situation within your business where no one seems to be aligned, tasks take forever, communication is broken, and you're afraid of correcting your team for fear of hurting their feelings? I think all of us have been there at one point or another. This is why today we'll talk about this amazing book. It's called Radical Candor. How to get what you want by saying what you mean. Written by Kim Scott. Today, I hope to give you a strong idea of what this book is about, sharing what for me are some valuable golden nuggets and hopefully entice you to read it, adding lots of value to your life and those around you. Additionally, if you find value in what you hear, please take a second and push the like and subscribe button below. So stay tuned and buckle up while we explore Radical Candor. Welcome. Welcome back. Before going into the golden nuggets, here are what for me are the four strongest breakthroughs I got from the book. First, this book emphasizes in the Radical Candor framework as a compass to understand in which quadrant you fit best as a leader. Either in radical candor, obnoxious aggression, ruinous empathy, or manipulative insincerity. Second, he delves into the importance of caring personally about your teammates and challenging them directly to be able to embrace conflict willingly and achieve what's needed. Third, embracing the get stuff done wheel or the GSD wheel in order to avoid falling into the trap of having to tell your team what to do all the time and making it appear as though you are micromanaging. Ring a bell? Fourth, embracing the idea of weekly follow-ups or one-on-ones as part of the leader's routine to understand where everyone is in your team at the time so that they can operate freely and free you up of time to do strategic thinking and being able to spend time in other projects or do coaching to the people that most need it. More to come. Welcome back. So let's get started with an overview of this powerful book as well as highlighting some of very valuable golden nuggets. This amazing book is divided in eight sections and some very fine bonus chapters, all full of gold. If used properly, this book will guide every reader and leader towards a maximum efficiency level of communication across the organization, up, down, and sideways, while provoking a positive impact all throughout the business. It is more than just a management philosophy. It is a mindset that can revolutionize how you lead and connect with your team, and the sooner you embrace it, the better it will be. At its core, it's about building genuine relationships while fostering a culture of open communication and growth. And if you don't believe me, I challenge you to read it. One major nugget I found within the read is the powerful concept of caring personally. Scott emphasizes the importance of understanding and valuing each team member as an individual. This creates a sense of belonging and trust in the workplace increasing morale, and therefore reducing turnover. Equally crucial is the aspect of challenging directly. Radical candor encourages leaders to provide honest and straightforward feedback. It's about addressing issues head on while maintaining a supportive and constructive tone. Feedback is a component of radical candor. Scott advocates for regular specific feedback as a tool for professional development, creating a culture where feedback is accepted and embraced. Here is where our most valuable one-on-ones happen, as a tool to guide and develop your team. However, the team needs to understand that the leader, to guide and coach, they need to know what is happening and the context of the things. Keep dirt under your fingernails, as Kim would put it, meaning keep your feet on the ground and be willing to do the work if needed. This will connect you more with your team. Nonetheless, people sometimes see this as micromanaging. 
and you have to be careful so it does not come across this way. Regular reviews and one-on-ones are a way to explore how providing and receiving feedback can lead to continuous improvements and success. Let's face it, difficult conversations are inevitable. Radical candor equips leaders with the skills to navigate these discussions effectively. We'll be able to share tips on approaching challenging topics with empathy and authenticity. Striking the right balance between empathy and accountability is crucial. Radical Candle enables leaders to be empathetic while holding team members accountable for their performance and growth. Scott introduces the Radical Candle framework with four quadrants, obnoxious aggression, ruinous empathy, manipulative insincerity, and radical candor. We'll explore each quadrant, understanding how they impact workplace and dynamics. The first quadrant, obnoxious aggression, is characterized by being brutally honest, but lacking genuine care. It's like a wrecking ball, damaging relationships and trust within your team. Ruinous empathy, the second quadrant, is all about caring personally but avoiding the tough conversations. This might seem like kindness, but it can hinder professional growth and lead to complacency. Manipulative insincerity is the third quadrant, where neither honesty nor care are present. It's a toxic environment where communication lacks authenticity and team members may feel undervalued. Now, onto the sweet spot, radical candor. It's about caring personally and challenging directly. This quadrant fosters a culture of trust, continuous improvement, and genuine connection within your team. It is important never to personalize. Always address the issue and don't attack the person. Praise the things that you want more, avoiding comments like, don't take it personally, but... You have to be open to receiving criticism. And if your team is unwilling, you might be able to create a situation where this is done, like passing the ball or taking turns with different members of the group. In some societies, embracing conflict is difficult and it can become a barrier to overcome. So you have to be creative. More to come. Welcome back. I love this section where we get to share some real life examples of things that happened to me in the past and can bring context to what we're reading in the book. The first example happened many years ago in my early 20s while getting myself through law school. I had one job that I truly loved. It was working at the restaurant. For context, while growing up, aside from many issues at home, I had the opportunity to go once or twice a year on humanitarian missions to rural areas in Mexico and help communities that were going through really tough situations. From family stuff to financial issues and grief, you name it. So I grew up very sensitive to what other people felt and needed. You could say I am an empath and a strong one, I think. My sense of helping and caring only grew stronger over the years. So the story goes that I was a manager at that point in time. I had a strong relationship with my team. For some reason, people throughout my life tend to get close to me and confide personal things with me. In this specific case, it was a server in my team. We had daily huddle ups and communication was really good. The server had a big substance abuse problem and opened himself up to me, asking for help. At that specific moment, I didn't know how to react. I was still young and lacked the tools and skills to help with something like this. But I knew I had to help. So I went with my boss, seeking guidance and wisdom. I will never forget what he told me. He said, Charlie, never get involved with an employee so much that afterwards you need to commit on helping them. This did not make sense to me at all. In fact, I was totally against it. Something within me told me I had to step in. So this is how it used to be. Generation after generation, caring for your team and having empathy was seen as a weakness, in some cases rather than as a strength. And that was horrible. 
I did help my coworker in the best way I could. I asked for help on Alcoholics Anonymous clinic that was near the restaurant and they guided him properly. He recovered and lived a fulfilling life the last time I checked. And how was this achieved? Well, without knowing at the time, all we know today is that open channels of communication and deep caring for my team's well-being made me move mountains for them. This was but one of the many cases. The second example, a couple of years back, I knew nothing about a concept of radical candor. Someone recommended the book to us at the moment, and we read it. After reading it the first time, some people thought it was a good excuse to drop bombs over you. And every time they did, they were clear on saying if they could, in the spirit of radical candor, be direct with you. And boom, sort of like when my son tells me, Dad, with no offense intended, can I tell you something? You pretty much know where this is headed. Nothing good will come out of it. See, the radical candor concept is not a weapon. It won't work only if you're dropping aggressive or correction bombs on people all the time, or else everybody will lose faith in it very fast. There has to be a deep caring, acknowledging the wins, and publicly praising when needed, as well as willingly embracing conflict on both sides. There must be a close relationship with your team where regular reviews and are conducted and one-on-ones are a common thing. In fact, for me, it is still a work in progress. After reading this book for the third time, I now believe in it even more. To embrace it, you as a leader must be willing to drop down egos and pride walls to favor the team's greater good, which I come to cherish. This is the way to success. I'm not saying if you don't apply it, you can't succeed, but rather, if you do apply it, you will get there faster and with less pain. In addition, your team will be more engaged, better informed, properly guided, and definitely happier. The third example, I now understand that in order for radical candor to have a positive outcome, it is important that everyone in the team is aligned. The first time I read the book, I made my first attempt at implementing the concepts with my team. And it was actually not good. In fact, I believe it backfired. I tried to be close contact with my leaders and truly care about them. The same as I've always been. I did my reviews, my one-on-ones, and for some reason, I could not get through at 100%. So I stopped implementing the concepts at that moment. I didn't understand that I was just partially wrong because I was only doing part of it right. Additionally, my team at the time had not read the book. So it felt basically like it was just me against the world, sort of like an uphill. Sometime later, I took a second stab at the book and understood the concepts much better, in a deeper way. I reviewed some of Kim Scott's videos and understood where she came from. I am now a firm believer that the concepts do work, but the team has to be involved in the implementation from the start. More to come. Welcome back. So my final thoughts and scoring are, I consider this book to be an essential tool to create efficient channels of communication within your company and let everybody be heard. This book won't collect dust on your bookshelf. After you read it, because you will continuously be using it as a reference guide, you will be convinced that this is an amazing read. This is why I'm giving it five light bulbs. True enlightenment. More to come. So welcome back. So let's talk a little bit about the author. Meet Kim Scott. She was born in June 4th, 1966 in Hanover, New Hampshire, United States. She earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in English and European Studies from Princeton University and later pursued an MBA from Harvard Business School. Throughout her career, 
Kim Scott has held various roles in the tech industry. She was a member of the original Macintosh team at Apple, where she worked with Steve Jobs. Later, she co-founded a software company called Use Software and served as its CEO until its acquisition. Scott has also worked at Google with Larry Page leading the AdSense, YouTube and DoubleClick online sales and operations team. Her experience in small startups and large corporations have given her a unique perspective on effective leadership practices. You can find more information on her through her website, KimMaloneScott.com. In addition to her work in this business world, Kim Scott is a sought after speaker and leadership coach. She has shared her insights on leadership and radical candor at various conferences, workshops, and corporate events. Aside from radical candor, Kim Scott has written the following books, Radical Respect, Virtual Love, The House Husband, and The Measurement Problem. These last three were novels. More to come. Thank you, Kim Scott, for this powerhouse of knowledge. For those who read it, your company will not be the same. It will be a hundred times better. Our next book will be Mindset by Carol Dweck, The New Psychology of Success. You will love it. Until then, thank you, my dear readers. Please let me know in the comment section below if you have any comments or questions. Thank you for all your emails of support. I've read them all. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe if you're so kind. It helps this project continue living. And until next time, be kind to one another. There's not enough kindness in this world. Thank you very much.